I have built web apps. I started with Meteor and its handlebar syntax about 10 years ago and then quickly jumped on the React bandwagon. Its pure functions with UI being a function of state was a breath of fresh air and I really fell in love with being able to go forward and backward in front end state with the introduction of Redux. Hell, I fell in love so hard that I implemented Redux in C Sharp so that I could use it in my day job with Unity's UI. I ended up creating about four massive projects over the course of the last seven years, culminating with a 3D visual editor written using the amazing React 3 fiber to create 3D virtual worlds. When server-side React was first talked about, I was excited again. Here's something I can get on board with. Render on the server, return the UI. But I kind of lost the way with Next.js. The promise of amazing DX was overshadowed with the instability and information hidden away in this new framework that I had to learn. I have been writing quite a lot of Rust in the evenings, trying to recreate all of my little projects in Rust. This is my new obsession and it wouldn't be a surprise to anyone if I tried setting up the web stack in this as well. The DX of Rust also has me frothing at the mouth with the excitement, but maybe I'm in the honeymoon phase, who knows. I had the perfect project in mind too. I have been reading through once.com's philosophy about buying software once, and I thought to myself, why not buy software nonce times? Wait, is nonce.com available? Oof, nope. Wait, did I reinvent free and open source software again? Damn it. Anyway, making a Slack or Campfire clone seemed like an exciting thing to do, so I got down to it. Here's Speak With, a single binary chat application that you can use today to somewhat replace your work Slack. It has no external dependencies right now and can easily be self-hosted from the binary. The current version was built over two weekends and has the following features. Public and private chat rooms. User to user private chats with an option to have multiple users per private chat. User management. New users use the registration link but are not activated unless the admin allows them. It has tiny things like user profile images. Future planned work includes file uploads through chat, emojis in messages and generally richer text messages with code blocks and user and channel tagging in the messages automatic backups to storage providers, user online indicators and unread message counts, notifications, archiving channels, automatic SSL, cross workspace connections like Slack connections, and a UI UX overhaul, maybe. You'll have to live with programmer art for now. Don't forget to subscribe to get notified of updates to this stack and to the new chat app in the future. How did I build this? The stack I used to create this Slack or campfire clone is called Tamasha. It has Tailwind, Mini Ginger, Alpine, SQLX, HTMX, and Axum. Let me take you through it. Tailwind. This is fairly obvious. I have been on the utility classes bandwagon for a while now. It makes iteration so much faster. And I get to keep all of my styling in the HTML. The UI you see here has been carefully copied, I mean designed, by referencing sources on the internet, places like flowbyte.com and hyperui.dev. Wonderful resources if you want quick HTML for your UI. There is a tiny problem that you're sending so much text when you're returning HTML from your servers because of Tailwind. I mean, look at this button, jeez. It might as well have been a tiny class and I agree, it does make sense. Having a single tiny handmade CSS file is much better, but I am no UI wizard and this would take way longer for me. The first element of the stack that might get removed in the future is probably Tailwind. Marsha is a good name for a stack too. Now, Tailwind brings another complexity. It needs to be built. I began by having a build.rs that called Tailwind CSS and created the output.css. But this was a terrible option that increased build times for tiny CSS changes. I have solved this by using a just file that runs Tailwind CSS binary in watch mode in parallel with cargo watch so that I don't need to rebuild the Rust binary when my CSS changes. The just file is quite dumb too, using the bash ampersand to send one of them to the background. It just takes care of handling the restart rewatch cleanup quite nicely for both processes. Mini Ginger. I shopped around quite a lot for the templating framework I could use with this stack. I began with mod, but the recompilation step in Rust can halt anyone's productivity. That also ruled out Askama, which is probably faster than my eventual choice, Mini Ginger. 
It has the concept of loaders, which lets me update my templates in the background without triggering a recompilation of the Rust source. Now Rust only recompiles when I actually change Rust code, like the API handlers and such. I also used Rust embed to actually embed all of this front-end code directly in the binary in release mode and read it from disk when in dev mode using the notify crate. Now I can reload the templates when they change on disk in debug mode. Alpine. Despite the awesomeness of HTMX, there are quite a lot of reasons to still have front-end JavaScript. And even though I'm completely on board with the Hetios principles, I understand that you need to have front-end JavaScript. Hell, the front-end library of Peace, HTMX, is all JavaScript. The chat app does not have a lot of front-end state, but where it does, Alpine shines quite bright as an alternative to writing JavaScript. Simple things become simpler with Alpine. Showing modals and keeping a complex form state is what I reach out to Alpine for. More importantly, I don't have to shy away from complex UI just because I'm doing server-rendered HTML. A good example is creating the new private group chat. You want to be able to search for and then add them to the chat, but you only want to create the chat room on the backend once you have finalized the list. This means the frontend needs to keep a list of users who will be part of this new room. Alpine's X data and simple tags to the rescue. I remember writing Redux actions and handlers to manage such things. And this feels like I'm back in 2013, writing my first Pong game. No need to manage complex UI things in my head. It just works. Enough of the front-end stuff. Let me tell you a secret of the Rust world that I don't see a lot of people fawning over. Compile, time, checked, SQL. What? Yes, you heard that right. Every component of the stack has my heart, but SQLX probably has it most. I have dabbled with ORMs, and Diesel is great, but I like having the raw power SQL, and that usually means I can shoot myself in the foot. But it is so much harder to do with SQLX. All the SQL is actually checked against a real database at compile time, and I see the little red squiggles telling me how I misnamed a thing or didn't provide enough things. There are features I really wanted to have, but it already has 99% of what I need in a magnificent fashion. Combined with the migrations feature that embeds migrations in the binary and runs them at startup and using SQLite, you get one more step in the direction of a single binary no depths application. HTMX. Oof, I have so much to say about this. It has been a discovery. What a journey. I'm still learning, but once you understand Hetios, it is so much easier to reason about everything. The server has the canonical state of your application. Let it render and return that. UI is a function of server state. Server rendered React, but without the ceremony. And most importantly, HTMX makes my app feel seamless. Let's look at the simplest example. Click on a channel, open channel. How does it work? HX get the URL and replace the response in the element with the ID. The server renders the channel UI and sends it over. More complex interactions? Updating the user profile image, for example. Call the function and the server returns the new UI that it has replaced gracefully with or without the image. Works with image deletion as well. I would love to use the HTMX indicator to show loading times, but that is soon in the future. The SSE plugin enables the core features of a chat app, live chat. Once the fragment is loaded into the UI, it connects to the SSE endpoint, which then returns the rendered Jinja fragment for any new message as part of this SSE stream. HTMX does its magic and puts the new element at the bottom of the UI. Pagination is also beautifully handled. An element with the hxget next page is added at the top of the list. Triggered by intersect once, it asks for messages from the backend, which complies with a new list of messages, but an incremented next page. But if it is out of messages, then the intersect once element is completely skipped and the pagination stops. B E A beautiful. There are some hacks here. For example, interacting with Alpine's local front end state when selecting a list of users meant I had to create a dummy list of inputs that get passed to the form submission as data. I have yet to figure out how to pass this local front end state to the HTMX call without actual HTML elements, but it works and it's a small detail. I have also not shied away from writing some JavaScript as well. For example, when a message is sent successfully, I use JavaScript to clear the form. 
wiring it up with the HX on after request tag. I cannot recommend HTMX enough if you're building something new. It is refreshing, albeit old, take on how to make actual useful applications and it deserves all the recognition it has been getting lately. The Axum Crate is what ties all of this together. I have used a fair share of web frameworks, Meteor, Express with Node, Next.js, serverless stuff, Jin and Echo with Golang. And I can say with quite a lot of confidence that Axum is probably one of the best out there. It takes a little getting used to, especially when the handlers just don't compile. But once you understand the why, combined with the safety guarantees of Rust, it starts to make sense. Of course, the form needs to be the last in the arguments. It needs to consume the body of the request. Did you forget to put a mutex on your shared state? Does it need to be a mutable shared state in the first place? Assume all requests are handled in separate threads and you can see why maybe you need to put some things in an arc. It takes away a lot of pain in setting up the usual things and the examples folder will show you how to do the rest. The core of a chat app, real-time messaging, is achieved here using Axum's Performant SSE handler. Whenever a new message is sent, just send it down to the Tokyo broadcast channels and let it SSE forward the messages on the stream to the active subscribers. The really nice thing here, combined with HTMX SSE plugin, is that there is zero management of connections from my end. The connection is closed and cleaned up on disconnect and the front end does automatic reconnect as well. I have built chat in the past and the complexity involved in this step is usually the reason for a lot of bugs, not here. I almost assumed that I have done something wrong because of how easy it was to hook up. But nope, it is actually that easy. Future work? Error handling. This is lacking to say the least. Almost all internal errors are returned as status code 500 and the front end doesn't really handle them. The response targets HTML plugins allows for really easy UI feedback to show the user that there is something wrong and there is some work to wire that up everywhere. Loading states. HTMX requests have a nice HTMX indicator attribute that can be used to show front-end loading state. Absolutely required for a nice user experience. Performance. Clones litter the code base right now, but I'll focus on removing them after setting up some benchmark tests. And tests, again, two weekends does not a unit test make. But testing is like second nature in a Rust crate that is very high on the agenda going forward. I am hoping to have this product as a serious open source alternative to options like Slack and that would require some serious work. The repository is now public and I look forward to your feedback and contributions. Tamasha. The stack has been developed over the course of the last few months and has been wonderful to work with. I've shown you how I've used it to create SpeakWith and I hope you can use this information to set up your own version. If you find better alternatives or replacements, it is quite easy to plug in and replace things here. Hit me with your best suggestions. You know where to find me. Cheers.